Emperor Justinian also, at the request of the Council of Carthage, deprived those of Africa, the African Jews, of the exercise of their religion. Don't keep the Torah. what is up guys welcome back to the channel today in this video i want to reveal to you the true purpose behind christianity and islam finally time that the negro understands that these religions despite how they like to preach about salvation for all people in reality has no intention or ability to provide salvation for the negro it's gonna be a very difficult one for people who have been Christians for generations, right? Their grandparents, great grandparents have been Christians. Same thing for those who have also been Muslim as well, guys. This video has the ability to offend a few of you, okay? But I hope, despite being offended, you can still receive the message and you know decide for yourself whether you agree or disagree, okay? So here is this book I'm going to show you guys on the screen. It's called Atlas Geographus, or a complete system of geography ancient and modern for africa guys there's a lot of information in this book this book is volume 4 and if you look down here we can see when the book was published ndccxiv is 1714 guys think about it okay think about let me just let you guys know how old this book is the united states of america was founded in july 4th 1776 this book is at least what 60 years prior to the formation of the united states okay so it's a very old book okay let's see what this book tells us about africa all right so here we are on pages 39 guys okay we're going to start from this section there's a lot of information right here let me zoom right in because we need to see this the negro needs to understand how much he has lost how much of his history is being hidden from him okay so look at what this book says right here so much for the whites okay so in the previous page he was talking about caucasians look at what it says right here now we shall treat of the blacks when we come to guinea negro land and the cape of good hope okay so guinea if you guys haven't seen um these uh pre-colonial maps of africa i'm going to show you guys one on the screen and you can see this region right here where it says guinea upper guinea right here and lower guinea in this section okay and then it says negro land next negro land is the sudan okay when i say sudan i'm not talking about the one that was founded in 1956 or 59 by the colonizer okay that one at the south of egypt i'm not talking about that sudan that sudan is a relatively new and honestly very small thing the real sudan is in west africa and i'll show it to you on this map you can see where it says sudan okay in other maps you see that same region called negro land land of the negroes okay very important to understand okay and the cape of good hope so when you see cape of good hope this is talking about the region of southern africa countries like south africa namibia many other countries in that region of the world it's talking about these areas okay so let me just read it again we shall treat of the blacks when we come to guinea negro land and the cape of good hope where they inhabit the blacks the negroes inhabit okay leo says there are other kingdoms on the southern frontier of this country which are inhabited by a rich industrious and just sort of people judaism hmm judaism okay now honestly i don't like that word judaism i think that word has a deceptive origin when i hear judaism to me i hear torah but i believe some very cunning wicked people has used that word judaism to separate the torah from the laws of god which is what it, the torah is the laws of god and instead add other things like the talmud because today people who are keeping the talmud they call it judaism that's why i don't like that word okay so when i say judaism you should understand that i'm speaking of the torah okay that's what i'm saying talmud is not the law of god it's an abomination so judaism or the torah i'm going to use that torah was the religion of the ancient african for a long time the negroes in africa was keeping the torah for a long time but what happened okay what happened all of a sudden this is what happened and succeeded by christianity yes okay christians came here and started forcefully i have to let you guys know this 
forcefully converting the synagogue of these negroes into churches and i'm going to show you guys that in another book very soon but let's just keep reading this one for now but mohammedanism islam prevailed in the 200 year of the hegra when all the jews the negro jews the negroes right here all the negroes who were keeping the torah the christian the negroes who were converted to christianity and the professors of other african religions that could be found were put to death yes okay islam came and killed so many people converted them into their own religion that's what we're reading let's keep going so yet in the process of time their intestine quarrels okay be the issues within africa caused many of the negroes to neglect muhammad's law okay they were rejecting it they were waking up realizing that you know what this islam thing it's not the true faith guys the true faith by the way is the torah okay but let's keep going and they revolted from the caliph of baghdad for which they were severely punished yeah this is what happened okay this is what happened okay they were severely punished the arabs came back and killed many of them who were rejecting islam severely punished by the mohammedan caliphs who caused very important point here who caused all their books to be burned now you have to ask yourself what books is this talking about these books guys are the heritage of the negro as the israelites okay books on the torah books on our history books that connected us to our heritage as the israelites all that stuff these arab invaders into our land into africa burnt all those books very important line for us to keep in mind okay burnt all our history burnt everything that's why today people think africans have no history well it's because these things were burnt guys okay now let's see what happened next these arab invaders burnt all of our books on the suspicion that the knowledge of the arts and sciences the knowledge of our history let's be honest prompted them to condemn muhammad's law the laws of our god the torah all those books many of them were destroyed by these arab invaders guys and it's very important that we understand this now this book really focused on the arabs what they did i want to show you what the christians did earlier because i touched on the fact that the torah look at right here the torah was a religion of the ancient africans for a long time and succeeded by christianity so let's touch on that okay i want you guys to see this book that gives us much information about christianity because christianity did not come nicely guys no let me show you what happened all right guys so here we are on this book i want you guys to see the book it's called the history of the jews from the destruction of jerusalem to the present times okay by hannah adams this book was published in the year look at the year right there guys 1818 okay these are very old books that record the history from long long time ago guys okay let's see what it says about christianity when it came into africa remember the africans were keeping what the torah okay what that book called judaism i call it the torah that's what i'm talking about okay they were keeping it for a long time because the negroes were there the negroes are the israelites okay but let's see what happened when christianity came into africa let's see they came in nicely okay so here we are guys we are on page 148 so we're gonna learn some very important parts of history guys okay so look at this right here the emperor justinian one of the emperors of the holy roman empire guys okay like five centuries after the messiah died okay let's see what he did okay so the emperor justinian who assumed the prerogative of deciding on all religious controversies okay the israelites in particular issued an edict which prohibited they are celebrating the passover oh okay remember the passover the passover was the day the most high sent his spirit to go into the land of egypt to pass over the israelites and kill the firstborn of all the egyptian families guys very very powerful um day in israelite history guys okay so this emperor issued an edict which prohibited the israelites from celebrating the passover according to their own calculation and obliged them to observe it at the same time with the christian church which is wrong christianity exists to stop the negro from knowing god okay and the only way to do that is by teaching the negro to break the laws of god i made a video that reveals uh, king leopold's actions in the congo okay and this is the plan that the caucasians have for all africans and all negroes worldwide guys you need to see that video very powerful lesson on the true objective of christianity okay but let's keep going so this emperor justinian this holy roman emperor he did not want the jews to keep the passover on the appropriate day he wanted them to keep it 
on the day that the Christians, these nasty ass people, were keeping it, okay? Soon after, he forbade the magistrates to admit them to give evidence against the Christians. Oh wow. And deprive them, deprive the Israelites of the privilege of making wills and bequeathing legacies. Wow, this guy is trying to destroy the heritage of these Israelites, guys. Very powerful stuff. Let's keep going. Look at this. These decrees were followed by another still more oppressive, which interdicted them from educating their children in their own faith. Don't teach the Israelites to keep God's laws, guys. You need to understand this is the objective of Christianity right here. Okay, to stop the Negro from keeping the Torah. But let's keep going. Emperor Justinian also, at the request of the Council of Carthage, deprived those of, let's see, those of who? Those of Africa, okay? <laughs> the African Jews, okay? These are the Negroes who are in Africa. Those of Africa, of the exercise of their religion, don't keep the Torah. And commanded the prefect to convert their what synagogues, synagogues in Africa into churches. Okay, this is very important that you understand. This is why the Negroes today, you guys love Christianity. You don't realize that you are the Israelites. Okay, you were forced centuries ago by wicked people like like this king, Emperor Justinian, and even more recent, you know, Caucasians like King Leopold and many of these other Europeans from keeping the Torah, the laws of the Negro's God, okay? The Most High is not the God of everybody. Is he the creator? Absolutely. He created all things, but he is not the God of everybody, guys. He is the God of the Negro, okay? So very important you understand what this wicked Christian man did. Deprive those African Jews, African Israelites of the exercising of the religion. Stop them from keeping the Torah. And he commanded the prefects to convert their synagogue where they worshiped their God into churches. Okay. And this is something that we have to realize, guys. Many of us, we are asleep with these Christian churches thinking that they are teaching us to keep God's laws. No, they will never do that. Your enemy will never teach you to keep the law of your God. Because if they do that, if they make that mistake and teach you to keep God's laws, your God will bless you and make you rise above your enemy and he will put curses, those curses that are upon the Negro race today, he would put it upon our enemies. This is in the Bible, I'm going to show you guys right here on the screen where I got that from, okay? This is the reason why your enemies do not want the Negro to keep God's laws. In that letter from King Leopold, he tells his Christian missionaries, don't teach these niggers, don't teach these Negroes. To know God, don't teach them to keep the Torah. Okay, it's all about stopping the Negro from keeping the Torah. Don't get it mixed up. The Torah is our salvation, it's the laws that our God gave us through Moses. Okay, and it's something that we need to keep as a perpetual covenant, guys. There is no end for the Negro keeping the Torah. Okay, but as you can see right here. Christianity tried to stop us. Islam came later on, tried to stop us. These are all the religions of the Negro's enemies. We must return back to the Torah, okay? That is the lifeblood of the Negro race.